Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenvo, and I am super happy to have. He's he's literally a rock star when it comes into dentistry. He's the general manager of Life Smiles Dental, and uh, we wanted to bring Osman on here to talk about you know the business side of, of the dental practice, but also how um, automation and technology is taking the, the practice to another level. And I actually liked it. You know? Yeah. Um, it's less patient management, more of, you know, uh, working in the office mm -hmm. and kind of bringing it back up. To but you had to, uh, it's almost like you had to learn. I mean, there's a lot of similarities between um, uh, like medicine and also. Oh, yeah. Industry. There's oh, a lot. Yeah. Other than some little terms. So you had to learn like the, the language and stuff course, like that. Of course. Of course. The terminology. Uh, how was that? I mean, it was good. It was good. I think. Uh, it took it took me a little while, but you know it it was tr easy transition. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too hard. So you know, um, so how did you get a how did you get involved with Mkinson and Samad and and all his team and and and, and whatnot? Like how 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 did that happen? So it was it was all right. I think um, Doctor that had mutual uh, contacts. Oh, okay. So uh, you know he approached us and he had you know this wonderful uh, company that he has yeah has and um, it's great. It's it helped us a lot with our patient management system. And then then. Um, you know, obviously, uh, they just released this kiosk system. And I'm kind of like beta testing it too. And, and uh, he was telling me, he was like, "Okay, uh, we have like amazing office, mm -hmm. uh, amazing uh, general manager of this practice who faces this problem." So the whole kiosk system. T tell me, like, why? Um, why was that something that was important to you? And I like your perspective because the doctor. I mean, with me, sometimes what I do is that, like I'm trying to see patients. Like I'm not. I'm not messing around in yeah, the front, yeah, I right? I'm yeah, not messing yeah. around in the yeah. front, you know? But yeah. like, uh, so when uh, Samad and Consent team uh, talked to you guys about that, what, what, I mean, uh, what, what, what made, what made it appealing for you? So it was, it was a, it was a great asset to having it in the front office because if I'm busy, you know, treatment coordinating or with yeah. other patients, it's there always as a secondary employee, yeah. so, so to speak. So um, it helps, it helps in uh, getting their forms and checking them in. Um, it's you know cool cool device that that we have as in the yeah. office. It it helps uh, you know kind of get the uh, outflow going a little bit better. You know because a lot of times people don't realize this, but um, when you're dealing with the business side, right? And and sometimes as a doctor, so I'm 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 guilty of this too. Like with my office manager, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's you know what's going on on there? Why why can't you get the forms right? All those things. But uh, and then also um, you know I don't think about as far as like the dynamics up in the front because you know, when, when a whole bunch of people come in mm -hmm. and people call at the same time, like it's chaotic, yeah, it's chaotic. up there. It's, it's chaotic, chaotic yeah, there. Yeah. And, and us in the back, I'm sure with the dark IQ is like, you know, Hey, what's going on? You right. know, what's going on guys? You know? So, <laughs> right. so again, tell me about like, uh, like that whole dynamic when, especially if you have someone who, um, you know, uh, doesn't show up to work. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's good in a sense that like, if, if you don't have, a full staff like we do right at the moment mm -hmm. um it acts like you know uh like almost a, another person I'm another person there yeah. right right so it's it's just management you know getting patients in reducing wait time in the yeah. lobby um getting getting them in and out faster for treatment consenting for their treatment helps forms i mean i could i could list you i mean uh, the one thing i really mm -hmm. like about inconsent is their forms because uh half the battle you probably already know this mm -hmm. half the battle is getting the information right, right like sometimes right. i'm like what you don't have your birth date in here you don't have the, yes, the yes, right yes. address you, know, you can't go go to each and every single patient and check to see what they yeah, have what they don't yeah, have yeah, so yeah, this yeah, system yeah. actually helps in getting all that in there yeah so yeah. uh I, i'm just gonna throw uh you know we're gonna switch gears in a little bit um so you know you, you you've been in the medical field and mm -hmm. then you came into dental mm -hmm. and and I always ask people this like I even asked Samad and M Consent when we had the interview I was like why did you decide to work with crazy people in dentistry man uh, it just <laughs> it just so happened to be that way and uh, Cra crazy people in dentistry and sometimes we have crazy patients oh of course of course <laughs> I mean that's I mean I think that's with any field but I mean uh, we love our patients for yeah. the most part and uh, you know. Getting getting them in with with this software that we have now, yeah, it helps with everything integration, um, trying to trying to basically make it less less work but yeah. more efficient. 
That yeah. Makes sense. So th- let me ask you this, because mm-hmm. this is the biggest problem, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know, like, when I talk to the MCONSENT team or any other uh, tech platform, mm-hmm. the big thing is, is that um, it's it's one thing to have something really good. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to actually get the team to buy in. So uh, you being kind of like the leader on the business side, mm-hmm. um, how was it? How was it just trying to get to people to uh, to implement things and, and whatnot? Um. Uh, I wouldn't say it was too hard. I mean, uh, thankfully, Summit made it very, very easy. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's a great asset um, when it comes to these kind of things, uh, especially, you know, bringing it into the office, introducing himself, what the what the software is about, what his company is about. Um, his team is excellent as far as getting the tech support I need. Um, I mean, I can just go on and on. Uh, I, I just feel like this is the great next step mm-hmm. in, in, you know, making practice management a lot easier for all different offices. So um, it's just, you know, kind of getting used to it. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like uh, other offices will definitely be uh, and more productive. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, because again, not everybody, not every doctor mm-hmm. is going to be lucky enough to have someone of your caliber working for them, right? So right. for those people out there who... You know they're trying to put together their team and and whatnot. Can you just give like, you know, if some if, if some doctor came up to you and said, okay, um, yeah, I'm starting my practice mm-hmm. and I'm trying to put my team together and I'm trying to get things right for for the front. Like, mm-hmm. what are some like what are some what's pieces of advice? Like, hey, you know, like for example, uh, my my big piece of advice. Someone asked about uh, if someone calls in sick. We we had a really big post in in my group, mm-hmm. and they said, well, what should we do? And I said. Well, as a practice owner, you gotta you gotta like roll up your sleeves, and, right? And, and oh, if someone yeah. doesn't show up, that of means course, of course, that means you're course. cleaning up the office, of course. That means you might be doing some cleanings. You yes. might have to, that's as a practice. So, so what's like a, a piece of advice for someone who's starting a practice, and and they don't have the benefit of having you as the right. as a, someone to help the business? What, what what to give a couple of pieces of advice? There. So, like you need you need compatibility. You need to be able to be more open-minded and uh, be a great multitasker so you you have to have you know different responsibilities that you should already you know kind of know what's going on and uh especially working in a dental office you you kind of have to know like if say somebody calls in sick or is not available at the time you know what the front office does what the back office does um how you know how do you go about getting supplies instruments medications things like that and you kind of basically know have to know the terminology yeah so that that plays in a big big way if you know the steps if you kind of like have an idea and my thing is is that obviously i started kind of fresh yeah so it took me it took me a little while but the good thing is that you kind of have to be a go-getter in that sense yeah. you know you kind of want to want to be able to enjoy what you do and then if you don't then you're just pretty much you know you you get jumped into dentistry i mean without uh Hardly any experience. experience now. Of course, yeah. you had experience on the medical side, but right. but dentistry is like a whole different language. You mm-hmm. know, for those who are watching right now, who are either onboarding people who have no experience, or actually, you know, for the people who have no experience, like let's say it's a, a like a spouse or a family member that's trying to help out in the practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your advice to them? Because again, uh, a lot of times as a dentist, we say, okay, we're going to train you up. But let's be honest, guys. I mean, most dentists, most dental practice owners, we're busy trying to uh, see patients. We, we don't really have time, time to, to train, train you up. Yeah. What, what is your advice to, to those who are jumping in and with no experience and, and, and trying to uh, do a good job? So I feel like I always have a positive attitude. Yeah. Um, you know, be in that go-getter mode, be, have an uh, open mind, you know, ask questions, be able to, you know, give and receive good criticism and yeah. feedback. Um, that really helps because anytime you're going to something that you're, you know, not really familiarized with, I feel uh, you kind of have to, you know, be on your feet a little yeah. bit. And, yeah, yeah, And kind of in- absorb everything in. What res- what resources did you use? Like, did you just go online and start lurk- looking up dental terms? Like, <laughs> like, like, well, lucky, say- luckily for me, I had a good medical that's background, right, that's so right. I had the terminology. But then, as far as like, like the business, like insurance and insurance, verification, insurance is a whole different ball oh, yeah, game. whole different like- ball game, and it, and and that has its own nuances. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta be on top of you know, are we are we compliance? Are we mm-hmm. having the correct billing system? Um, you know, verification system, things like that. So 
I, I still, you know, I'm still learning. Yeah. And that's, that's the good thing about it. Even though I've been there for a couple of years now, it still takes me a little. You know. I mean, so I think that's something that people have to realize that this is just like anything in life. Yeah. You're still learning, man. Yeah. Like, exactly. You're still learning exactly. all those things. Would you say that the best way to learn is just to go in there and do it? Of course. Because you can watch all the videos you want. And yes. there's resources on you go on YouTube and what there's right. all the videos. You can get all the training, but unless you just go in there and like maybe get your first denial or of, do all that of stuff. Of course, of course. Then, because when you face it, you just gotta figure a way to, to oh, manage yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's where you I think you excel and you learn. Because mm -hmm. if you once you hit a roadblock and an obstacle, you don't just stop there. Yeah. You have to kind of, you know, work your way around it and overcome those things. So um I feel like you you just have to be, you know, consistent in your work and your work ethic. So, you know, uh, since you've been doing this for a while and mm -hmm. you literally kind of grew into the position and learned, right. um, there's a lot of things that you could do that's manual and there's a lot of things that you can leverage technology and whatnot. Yes. So, again, I know you're a big fan of uh, M-Consent. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, talk about, like, what are some of the things that, MKinsent has done to make your life easier? Because again, you're right up there. You're in the trenches. Yes, yes. Patients yes. coming in. So, patients filling out forms. Correct. You, you, when, and again, it's it starts, what I love so much about their platform is that they the the forms is kind of like the foundation, right? That mm -hmm. you got to get the right information in. Because mm -hmm. if you don't get the right information, what happens to all your claims? Oh, it's they, they screw yeah. or Or what about when you try to reach out to patients, recall, and you don't have the right number? I'm sure that's happened oh, before. Exactly. And then you're exactly. like, oh, please, uh, come, just walk please, in one yeah, day. Just <laughs> walk in or give us a call. Yeah, because you don't have the right yeah, number or email. Exactly. So, so talk about how like the, the platform itself has, has made your life easier. So it's, it's drastically changed um, in, a, in a sense that I'm able to communicate faster. Yeah. Uh, I can take payments mm -hmm. online. I can send forms, I can send treatment consents, pretty much everything can be done. Now, obviously, you have to be there physically to, sure. you know, check them in. But that allows you to to focus on that? Of course. And then it, it helps with um, with just, you know, being on track. Yeah. And then uh, the kiosk itself is, like I said, like a secondary employee. So and, you know, I just want to let everyone know, like, literally, the, the reason why we have Osman on here is not only does he have a lot of knowledge that can really help out a lot of our members, but your office is literally like the pilot program that yes. used that. Yes. And, 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 and again, that's why I wanted to get your experience with that, because, yeah. uh, you know, we know how it is in the front. People walk in, you got phone calls, you got to mm -hmm. do all these things. And, you know, uh, when you think about kiosks, I mean, you go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at, uh, I was like at McDonald's. My kid wanted to get some breakfast there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you could still go up there and you can still talk to someone. Right. But there was a kiosk there. And I'm like, you know, I already know what I need to do. I just went in there and it was so quick. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times now people are are expecting that. Yeah. When you put that kiosk up in, the, in your practice, mm -hmm. um, how did the patients react? Let me so ask I, you that. I think it was more of a, in a positive, a positive way. Because they thought it was like, hey, this is pretty cool. Hey, this is a cool thing. This is a new device. So no one got... And, and again, um, I want to let everyone know this because a lot of times people are thinking, well, I don't want to get rid of my front office. I don't want to do the chaos. But I'm like, that's not the point. You, you know, you go to... You go to Kroger's or you go to uh, McDonald's. Uh, there's still like a checkout, course, right? And there's, a, you know, you you have a choice there. Did anyone, um, like any of the patients at, at your practice, did they did they get offended? Like, hey, I don't want to do that. Or, or no, or, it was I wouldn't any? say I wouldn't say they got offended. Uh, maybe I would I would think that a lot of the um, the elderly or senior citizens yeah. have a little hard time. You know, with, they would with rather the technology. And, and, which and the is, option is still there. Right, the option is still there. But to be honest with you, with this system in place, with like the kiosk. It kind of helps when patients are coming in that don't really want to deal with the front desk. Oh, yeah. This kiosk takes care of it. Oh, yeah. So they literally come in, they check in, they put their information in, and then if they don't have any forms, it sends it right to them. It takes a picture of them, so it automatically uploads, integrates straight into my software system. So I automatically know that they're here, they're checked in, that I have their forms, everything checks out. Their addresses are right, their phone yeah. numbers are right. And then it reduces the <laughs> yeah, so everything is there, and then... I'll just come in, check, and then that's it. Thank You'd be back. surprised. You'd be surprised, and I think you can support this too. You'd be surprised that even if uh, someone is telling your front desk their information, You'd be surprised that some people's level of spelling, <laughs> yes. it, it, even if they told them they could mess it up, yes. it's a great for them to do that. And again, um, 
you said something that was really true, and I and I'm gonna I want to put this towards our younger folks because I know like uh, my nieces and nephews, a lot of times they just they'll send me a text message, right? Yeah, they don't want to like, talk, <laughs> and, and it's like a like a novel, a, a whole paragraph. And, yeah. I, and I and I'll, and I'll call up uh I'll call up my my ne- my niece. I'll say Bailey, why didn't you just call me? Yeah. They're like, no, no, it's easier. But you guys have to understand that um, the mentality of a lot of the younger generation is a little different. Mm-hmm. They they don't want to talk to you. They yeah. just want to like. That's why they like to go to the. So they don't want to talk to you. They just give you the information, and they will only talk to you when they have to, which exactly. is dealing with the doctor. Exactly. Have you noticed like a lot of the younger uh, exactly. patients? I've, they I've, they like yeah. that. And and you're you're right on that. So a lot of the younger generation crowd will come in and. They're more tech savvy, yeah. so they like the kiosk system. They like, you know, not having to, you know, do to too talk much. to someone yeah, manual work and labor. So, if they can send it online or do it out their phone or email, perfect. And That's let me right. ask you this: I mean, again, uh, this is this is not coming from me. This is coming someone who's in the trenches who deals with the business <laughs> yes, side, right? Yes. But how often? Uh, let's do a percentage, okay? Between someone saying, "Hey, I want you to call me," and you just text texting text messaging somebody, mm-hmm. um, what's the percent? How often do people rather have you send a, a text message than you calling? <clears throat> I would say more than 75%. Yeah. 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 I mean, because again, you know, people think like, whoa, you know, I want the personal touch. And that's true, right? Mm-hmm. We're not saying that the sending a text message using a kiosk is any like different level of customer service. Of course. It's just different. It's Some just people different. just want that. I mean, yeah. again, if they need to talk to you, right, <clears throat> you're still there. And I'll put this as well. <clears throat> the fact that we have this system in place, obviously there's human error. Yeah. And people forget, which is, is part <clears throat> of, you know, life. But if I have a previous text that I've been sent and I'm like, you know, going through my stuff, I'm like, oh, yes, I still have this. I still have my form to fill out or I still have this payment to do or I still have to do this. So the technology, in a sense, will kind of help as a reminder, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, before we wrap up here, I'm going to ask you uh, some other pieces of advice, sure. okay? And again, for someone who's worked on the business side mm-hmm. and worked with a doctor, but also has a good relationship. I mean, you're friends with the, yes. with the, with the yes, practice, exactly. or you're good friends with them. You have it outside there. Yeah. Um, as someone who's on the, uh, the business side, what is your advice to all us doctors there as far as like, having a positive, a good, you have a good working relationship. Mm -hmm. You guys respect each other. You guys have a common goal. But a lot of times, you know, I think that uh, practice owner, we're so busy on like, okay, we're focused on trying to go into practice that uh, we miss a little bit on the communication side. What what has been, um, how has it been, so successful with you and that relationship with you and Dr. IQ. Can, can you just share some of the things so that, again, people who are in the same position, they can understand like that dynamic? Like, well, how, why has it been so successful with you guys? Well, just because uh, we're very open-minded and we always we really work to a, to a common goal. Yeah. Um, our thing is, is that we're not really looking to make money out of the patient. Our, pay, our thing is, you know, we want to make sure we do the right kind of service mm-hmm. for the right price and we want to attract more people in that, in that way. We're more of like a family. We don't really treat you as like, you know, you just come in as a patient and, yeah. and then we'll see you in six months. Yeah. That's not how it works for yeah. us. And a lot of the times, the good thing about our doctor is that a lot of the cases that will come in, we get a lot of people that can't even afford because dental treatment is very, very expensive. Now, yeah. And it's getting more expensive. But he, in a sense, will put in position. We have things that we can do to to help. Yeah. And I'm sure, um, you know, somebody can also shed some light on that because uh, I feel like a lot of people neglect their oral cavity just because they don't have the funds. Yeah, to do so. yeah. Have you have you noticed that uh, when uh, when you guys are willing to work with patients that that has been a great way to get referrals? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know the way you treat people and, and oh, work with I them. I think I think that's probably our number one reason why patients come back to us. It's because of our how we treat them, how our mannerisms are. How they feel because nobody likes to go to a dentist. Office. Yeah, Let's yeah, just be honest. of course, I mean, of course. Even just a normal doctor. Yeah, a dentist, I, I, I don't oh, even man. think I don't. Uh, as a dentist, I don't like going to the <laughs> dentist. <laughs> exactly. you know? And I work there, so yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I know, I know how that goes. But if you can make them feel like you know they're just part of your family, or like you know, if an, if an elderly lady comes in and you know she has like a something wrong with her dentures or something, I would treat her just like I would yeah. my own grandma. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're very receptive in that, and that's why our patients come back to us, not just because of the price or anything, but because of our hospitality. So, so with you, so with you and Dr. IQ, uh, you guys have a great relationship there, but it also it also sounds like that. You guys have a relationship that's grounded in like mutual respect and course, and, 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 and communication. Right. Um, 
I th- would you say that that's something that's really important when it comes to like a, a dental a dentist Absolutely. who's a practice owner Absolutely. and 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 someone who's um, they're working with with their team? Wouldn't you say that that's something that's super important? Absolutely, yeah. You have to be transparent. You have to be upfront because you know you're gonna have mess ups and slips yeah. here and there, which is part of you know normal. You know, and sometimes uh, the doctor is the one that messes up. Of course, and it right? could be me. Yeah. But the good thing is that since, and not just because we're friends, but we work towards that common goal. Yeah. We want the practice to succeed. The we mutual want patients, respect. Yeah, we want patients to you know to be happy and to be content with their treatment. So it's it's just a, a blessing in a, in a in a way that I'm able to help him. He helps me, and then we work towards that common that common goal. I love that. I love it. And on that, I, I think we're going to stop right there because the, the, you just dropped the mic right there. <laughs> but guys, you know, um, you know, uh, Osman here is just a great resource here. Um, I'm, I will get his contact information. We're not going to just uh, put his cell phone out there for everyone no, to bother no, and whatnot. No but he's, uh, he's uh, as you can see, he's a wealth of information. Um, whatever questions you guys have, I'll make sure you connect. But Osman, thank you so much no, for joining us. For thank you so much for sharing that. Not because a, a lot of times we have other dentists on there. And it's good to have uh, you know someone who, who manages the practice, who deals with the business. Uh, because, again... Uh, we have so many office managers in here that uh, that need to hear that. And some yeah. practice owners need to hear that as well. Yeah. So thank you yeah. so much for no, being a part a of this. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, well you know, glad you have me. Well, well, you know what? Uh, I have to say, um, so it's always, he's always dressed really nice. And I should have remembered that. I'm totally underdressed next to this guy. This guy's looking very sharp today. But hey, he has a, a very high attention to detail. And that's super important when it comes to something, when it comes to patient information, patient communication. We want someone who's very, has a high attention to detail. Now, the reason why I brought you on, obviously people have seen videos of M consent. And I like to say this, M consent, when you strip everything away, their main thing is, is to make sure they get the right data mm-hmm. in our practice. And that's so important. People are talking about white data. What are you talking about? Everyone's focused on all the, the bells and whistles. Like, hey, there's their text messaging. Is there analytics? Is there this and that? But at the end of the day, when it comes to your practice, you got to get the right data, meaning, I mean, the right phone number, the right name, all those things. You guys do such a good job of that. Thank Before you. we go into all the new things, talk about why is that so important to you to make sure the data is correct for the practice I think owner. The, the, the data is the number one thing. Why you would, how, you, I mean, getting paid is the most important. Yes, yes. And, you you got to keep your doors open. <laughs> and, and making sure when you submit those claims, there are no d- data inaccuracies. And uh, also, when when you when you work as a as a dentist, you want your mind off from all this administration work. Yeah, you want your mind on your treatment. And as a company, what we do is that we want to make sure that anything that the patient enters. It goes right into your practice management yeah. system, and that's that's the truth, right? Yeah. So what we saw in early days is that a lot of times there's a communication issue when you have when uh, those times when paper used to be the key. Oh yeah. <laughs> People used to fill out the information, and then I saw a, a, a registration form and a medical history form where. It surprised me that people would literally, you know, scribble stuff. Yeah, you can't and, read it. And hand over to an office manager or, or a front office. And the front office would look at it and it's like, she's puzzled now because she wants to <laughs> ask, hey, is it right? Or she is she going to get offended? I don't want my relation to, relationship to start in a way where I'm questioning what she's writing. Yeah. So that becomes like an issue with, with you know, for an office is like now they just go in and they just type in whatever they. Yeah, they, they just can. pretend they just they just kind of wing it, and then yes. what ends up happening is we don't have their right phone number, or we don't have the email, email address, or or worse yet, or worse yet, the medical history is not right. Correct. Right, and again, yeah. that leads to so many other things. Have you seen those medical histories when you tell patient? to fill out the medical history and they just <laughs> and you're looking at them and like did you even read this man yeah, yeah. so well, what i say is that you know the data integrity is number one whether it's dental medical whatever field you are in but data integrity what's coming into your practice management is super important and when i say and it's important not only for the claims but also to keep yourself protected sure yeah and because if somebody is not completing their forms properly the liability is high. Yeah. The liability is high. So I would say that's that's the number one thing for us as a company. And our team is great. And we have uh, amazing people in our team who make sure that, you know, we went through each and every 
part of the process working with hundreds of dental offices in making sure that we, we protect we protect them not only from the uh, uh, claim submission processes but also from the liability perspective. I, I, I love that because again, I, I led uh, the podcast off with you guys do what is considered like the, the basic function really good. And a lot of times people, they just get so enamored by all bunch of different features, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, think about it. If you're going to buy a car, right? And it has all these features, all the features in the world doesn't mean anything unless the car actually drives, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't even start, right? Yeah. So again, um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make fun of Tesla because uh, a lot of family members and friends have a Tesla. But man, remember like when there was that blizzard and people couldn't start their car because it was out in the cold? I'm just saying, guys, I'm just saying, again, you get your park inside. But what I'm saying is, is a lot of times we get uh, so enamored by all the features. But if the platform that you're using does not get the basic information, what good is it, right? What yeah. good is all those things? Yeah. But with that being said... Uh, M consent is not just about just doing the basic stuff. You guys also focus on making things more efficient. So of speaking course. of efficiency, you reached out to me uh, a long time ago. You said, "Hey, Glenn, I got this new. I got, we got this new feature. We're actually, uh, you know, piloting it with a great client. He's going through it right now." And I said, "Well, tell me what it is. You know, like why are so, you keeping so this from I'll, me? Let me let me take you to." A place where yeah. everybody uh, and I was gonna knows ask, this. Right? I want to ask you that. Yeah. I want to ask so, you, like, how did so that all start? I, so, so this is something where uh, I'm at the airport, right? And I don't have to go and talk to the lady anymore. I can go and, you know, punch in uh, my phone number yeah. or my booking ID at the airport, and I can print out a boarding pass, Yeah, right? Yeah. And that boarding pass, if I don't have anything to check in, I can just go to security. So I think what is going to be the future of every retail or uh, a storefront or what you can call is where you're dealing with patients, it's going to be a normalized that people would want would want to get checked in as fast as they can. Yeah. And part of that process not only just apply on the retail side, but also applies at the healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, you know, retail healthcare, you can call it, right? So when you are uh, when you have a patient that have to wait for you to just to see the front office for 20 minutes that's a problem oh yeah and the way the in the different industries work in different ways but the way everything is progressing i think the next step is going to be that the patients want to self check in themselves and what they want to do is that not only self check in themselves but they want to take care of things that they need to on their phone sitting there like I want to check my emails. I yeah. want to check my, you know, my schoolwork, whatever that is, while they're waiting for the doctor to check them in. So that's that's a that's the most important thing. So seventy percent of people would complete their forms online, like when you are sending them online, they'll do. But there's still those thirty percent who will come and ask you for, hey, what can I do? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I didn't I didn't complete it yet, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So if you and you have a front office that's busy, and after that you tell them, hey please, can you complete this? That takes them another 10, 15 minutes. It's just, they, they're going to feel like, oh, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. Right? So w to avoid those kind of situations, I'll give you a case study, which I have seen a doctor uh, who started her practice uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. right here in Dallas. And uh, she, didn't, she didn't start with a front office, right? Her husband will come and help us yeah. in a while. But they would have like two, three patients just waiting for a doctor to come and see them. So when they put the kiosk in, they're checking in, they're ready. Yeah. Like they're completing their forms, whatever they need to get done, the kiosk will tell them what to do. And they're they're ready and they're waiting. So not only in her case, but if you have busy front office, like you have 10, 12 patients every hour coming in, then the front office, instead of, you know, hiring like three people, you just have one person just telling them to go through the kiosk. When they go through the kiosk, you know that you got in what you needed. Yeah. As a, as, a, as a doctor and as a practice manager, you know what uh, you, you got it what you need. So what you needed. So that I think that's a, that's a, that's a critical aspect of the workflow. Right. So my background, if you don't know, but I have a Six Sigma Master Black Belt. That means that uh, Six Sigma is all about process improvement. So whenever I look at any business processes, I see that where is the friction. Yeah. And that friction is what you always have to keep an eye on. And if you remove that friction, your patient experience improves, your business improves, at the end, your bottom line improves. I mean, I uh, I love how you, uh, and, and, and let me ask you this. So did the 
kind of idea and the the uh, the genesis of the whole creating the chaos did that start when you were at the airport and you were I, sitting I, in that chaos or was yeah, it before or was it something else yeah no 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 so this started I'll, I'll tell you two things that happened Amazon is working on a uh, on a retail store that doesn't need oh yeah uh, I've been in one of those that doesn't need like yeah uh, you know the the, the you, you just need to go to the checkout place yeah. right uh, you just go you just shop with your phone. And you leave, mm-hmm. and that's they're they're building the future right there. Uh, so I was in Sam's Club. They have an app where you can just go and you can scan everything and you can put in your basket. And like this is where yeah. the future is moving. And uh, people who are in DSOs, big DSOs, they're looking at this and saying that how can we make the check-ins easy? How can we make the checkouts easy? Uh, and I think the private offices also need to think through that. Yeah. Just having that vision in your mind that this is what's coming. And so, so the 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 first thing was at the at the Sam's Club at the grocery store. So then and you the were thinking, you're like, huh? Let me see and how this works. And then the airport, and I'm like, you know, everybody is working on removing that friction of dealing with somebody before the check-in. So, um, you know, again, makes total sense. And for for the doctors who are, are watching this right now, I mean, again, think about your your daily life: going to the grocery store, going to like a McDonald's, or even the airport. A lot of times, and I'm the same same way. If I see a long line there, I'm going to the self check. I'm just going to do it myself, no yeah. problem, you know. Uh, and so again, I think like at the dental practice, uh, you know, we had uh, we had uh, Ospin on earlier, and he was talking about like, look, we're not forcing anyone to do anything. There's two options there, and I think that that's great to have those options for those patients who just want to do it themselves. Let me ask you this: as you you know launched this, and now more practices are using it. As far as like the training goes, how's that when it comes to to that? Was there was there a lot of issues there with the practices that you worked with as far as getting into their workflow? So so the thing is that uh, when when you're when you're talking about training, good thing about this thing is that your employees are going to deal less with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the thing is that mostly the patients are using it and it's self checking, right? I want you to think about this one example. Uh, and when you told me about standing the line. You go to McDonald's these days. They have a kiosk, like yeah, a huge yeah. kiosk sitting right yeah. there. You can go deal. I mean, you can give an order to the uh, to the cashier, or you can just do it right there, and just it will print out as yeah, and just wait, it. just wait. So, uh, how much technology that does that cashier have to deal with that kiosk? Almost zero. No, nothing. Right. So in the back end, they they just point to it. You know, right. In the back end, <laughs> our tech team actually take care of it. Yeah. And uh, I feel very proud of that just because, you know, that's the one technology where your staff have to deal really, really low uh, from the time perspective. Just You just have to plug it in. Plug it in, yeah. That's it. That's all you got to do. Yeah, you know? plug it in maybe 10 minutes of training. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now, um, as far as um, the whole plat- platform goes, I- again, you've been on before. We talked about the forms. Again, I want to lead with the fact with there's so many different platforms out there. But what you have to ask yourself is, does it do the core job correctly and efficiently? You can have all the bells and whistles. Mm-hmm. You can have all these things. You can have more and more different features. But if it can't get the data that we need, what's, what good is it, right? It doesn't do anything. But as far as having this kiosk function, how does that work for those who are, you know, they've, they've been on the fence and they're thinking about income consent? Is that like an additional thing? Is that part? Is that Are you putting that as part of the whole package? How's that all set up? I'll, I'll tell you this. This will not work for everybody. And I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. Okay. That. It's not for everybody. So so uh, <laughs> I, I want to point out you saying that because, uh-huh. again, um, if he was just selling something, he would just say, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. So you're, at least, you're, you're, you're admitting like, you know, some, some offices are not. No, you, you just have to, you, you just have to know if this something, because not everything is built for everybody. Yes. Yeah. If you're not a busy office and you're just going to see five patients, you know who they're, they're and you're just fine with that. And I don't think it's going to work for you. Yeah. And, and if honest. you're still doing paper charts, this is enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you're doing paper charts and you're comfortable with that, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sell you that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's only for people who are struggling with patients waiting for them to talk. Okay. It's for people who are, who are struggling to hire enough staff members and, they don't have enough help in the front office, right? So that's when I would come and say that, hey, we can help you. 
Yeah. I don't know. You're good with what you have right now. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. And so for those who, um, they, they, they want to take advantage of this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, not too many, there's other platforms that say they do a kiosk, uh, a function just to let you know, I've, I'm one of the beta testers as well. It is a true kiosk and I, I love it. Again, uh, some people may not like going to kiosks when they go to the stores. I'm that guy, actually, that goes to the self-checkout all the time. Because, you know, at the end of the day, look, if I want to talk to someone, I could just yell across and say, hey, how are you doing? But a lot of times, I just want to get my groceries and leave. Same thing at McDonald's. I want to get whatever my kid wants and just leave. So I love that. Um, so again, for those who, they want to explore this. They want to see this. Work. How, what's, what's the best way to get get? Connected? Yeah, what I would say is that uh, get a demo. Okay. And get a demo, learn a little bit about it, see if it's a perfect, good fit for you. And uh, we have a team. Uh, we have an amazing team. And uh, if you if you want to uh, talk to them, 877-203-6767 or www.mconsent.net. Um, and we're going to have all the links in the in the show notes. And if you guys are in the group, um, I, I, I always, I routinely... I routinely keep this guy busy. I tag him. Now I'm, I'm actually starting to tag uh, Zach a little bit more because we got to get that guy to work yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. But before, I always <laughs> just tag, I always like to tag the man here and you can still talk to him as well, ask him any questions there. But uh, again, I think the first step you said, just do the demo, sure. see sure. the core product, yeah. make sure that works for you. And then you can also explore the, the chaos. So I, well. I'll tell one thing that I want people to remember is that we have put in a lot of time and effort with hundreds of office to understand how we can make life easier of the front office. Whatever you do, whether you do digital payments, patient communication, text messaging, whatever you do at the front office, we have a lot of time to make sure that, you know, we are able to help them in the best possible manner. And that's why, you know, this, this software is in place, which, uh, which reflects what we want to do. All right. Samad, thank you so thank much you. for joining us, guys. I will have everything in the show notes. Uh, and of course, if you're in the 50 group, we can always, we, he's going to get tagged. You can reach out to him, but again, Zach is a, 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 a valuable team member on M Consent team. Uh, show him some love. Reach out to him. You don't have to bother this guy all the time. You can, but you can reach out to Zach. But thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nifty Thrifty, for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank Glenn you for having me. Uh, amazing experience. Always, always talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.